Well, a warm welcome to Vinny's vlog. How are you all? Hope you are well. Uh, you join me up in East Yorkshire. I am at my fishery that I own with a couple of friends. I am fishing a swim called the Paddock, for those of you that know the fishery, which is one of the smaller swims, but it's a swim that I really like, so I'll try and go down the steps without having a catastrophe. I'll show you what's going on. So there we go, moving into the swim. So like I say, it is one of the smaller swims on the lake, but I like it because you've got that overhanging tree there. Now the lake bed underneath those trees, what happened was these trees fell in. So obviously I've cut the, cut the snags out, but I've left some stumps overhanging and underneath there, the lake bed is concrete. You know, you get a really good drop. They've smashed that area up. I know they have because when the trees dropped in it, the fish were just sat in it, smashing it up. So yeah, it's a, it's a known spot. It's a good spot down there. And moving round into open water, which is where the middle rod is. Um, I haven't been down here for a while if I'm honest guys but what I do know it is fishing very well you know everybody that's coming down are getting a couple of bites so that tells me that the fish out on the feed so uh, that middle rod has got a, a severe S7 bashing <laughs> uh, yeah I've put a, a fair old bit of bait out there and we'll just assess what that rod does rod does I mean I'm pretty confident that that rod is going to um, is going to see some fish through this visit uh, and moving to the right of the swim uh, literally two and a half wraps out uh, there's a little tree marker that I've got in the distance there there's a little bit of a, a clay bouncy area you get a nice little bounce across with your marker so I always like to put a rig on there um, probably about half a kilo a bit over that one we'll just assess if they get in there then obviously we'll give them more and moving down to the right is where the aeration system is but that's not necessary at this time of year so there we are that's what's going on and there actually i'll talk to you about this because um that is a Shakespeare Cypridome for the older people who watch my vlogs. Uh, I absolutely love putting it up. The reason I'm fishing with that because it's a two-man and my wife is coming down to fish with me this weekend. Uh, it's Thursday night, but she's coming down tomorrow when she finishes at dinner time. So we're going to have a bit of a, a bit of a social with my wife while there's a little bit of sunshine left. But yeah, that is a Shakespeare Cypri Dome. And for those of you that are new to carp fishing, you don't have to thread fiberglass poles through a dome tent anymore. But when I started carp fishing, that was pretty much all that was available. And it absolutely takes me back even the smell of them uh, this is probably 97 98 I'm guessing something like that when these first came out so yeah mega mega bit of kit but yeah take about 25 25 30 minutes to put up certainly nothing like the modern shelters that we've got but there you go so there's my camp for the night uh, like I say we're here for the weekend and hopefully we'll get into uh, some of the stables fish I'm sure we will I didn't get a bite last night, but I've had one this morning. Yeah, it was a quiet night really. I had a couple of fish, but it certainly wasn't uh, super active like they can be at times on here. Uh, but I did expect a bite and it didn't go off, but the left hand rod, that one under the tree, that started liner in this morning and before this wind came up, I seen some fizzing, I thought, yeah, they're on that bait and uh, it's gone off and it's gone off with one of the real pretty ones. I'll have to check my book and see which one this is. I'm pretty sure I know where this fish came from. Stocked at about six pounds, something like that, I'm guessing. So yeah, one of the real pretty stables fish on my first morning. So all's good, we'll get the rod back, back out on the spot. See if we can get another fish.
Right, so I'm just going to top up that middle rod. Even though it didn't do a bite last night, I still want to I still want to feed the spot because I've had it on here before when you fished pretty heavy with the bait and the rod's lined and you've not had a bite. Oh, it's usually silvers that have got on onto the bait and I'm actually fishing 8 mil S7 with a bit of pellet here so I haven't got a problem with the rod smashing it because the carp can soon move them out the way and do it in and that's when you can get a hit on here doing this even though like I say the rod's not done anything yet but just keep it active and then rod will cloud it up and uh, hopefully this rod will do me a fish Right, well I've moved swims. Yesterday I moved down here into the uh, into the pump swim for those that know the lake. Yeah, I just just wasn't getting liners, wasn't seeing fish. I had that really nice scaly one the other morning, but uh, yeah, I seen fish up here and I thought I'm gonna have to move, so bomb the gear down. And I had a small fish through the night and I've just had this one. Which is a lovely, bang on 20 pound mirror carp and we are now really in bite time at the moment so <coughs> if I'm honest I'm expecting another bite before the morning's out because I know the fish are here they were really active last night down here there was loads of boshing and uh, like I say I did have that other fish but that was a smaller common mid double common so get the fish back and I reckon we're going to get another bite this morning. Okay, so this is the last fish of the trip because we're almost packed up now. And a lovely fish to finish with. Look at that lovely chestnut brown mirror. There's only a couple of scales on its tail that stops it being a leather. So very close to a leather this one. And uh, like I say, this is the last fish because we're nearly packed up. So I've had six bites on the trip and six fish landed. So a testament to the new PowerCav hooks from PB Products because they're the hooks I've been using on this trip on the KD rigs with the S7 wafters. So we'll get it back and we'll get home. Okay, so you join me on a new fishery for me. Yeah, well, I say new fishery. I have fished here before. I'm on The Approach, which is in Castleford in the north of England, formerly known as Eric's Willows, which most of you who know this area will know the lake as. So, yeah, um, I've come down for a 48 and I haven't fished for a while, to be fair. It's been pretty hectic in my life. Um, new job and lots of all other stuff going on, but I've got a bit of time for some fishing, which I'm uh, incredibly glad of. Uh, it was raining all morning, so I've finally got set, set, settled into a swim. So I'm on the Trout Lake. Um, I don't know anything about this lake, if I'm honest. I really don't. Um, I know it's got some big ones in it but i'm not in the mix i don't think i know anyone who fishes or certainly not in conversation with anyone who fishes here so basically what i've done with it i've had a word with the guys up at the lodge and one of the bailiffs has been fishing this swim i'm in swim nine um and he said that he wasn't fishing days just doing nights because he's working of course so um he said it's a bit of a wasted opportunity he says it's more of a day swim this so i've come in swim nine it's central on the lake i've got the wind blowing into me so in actual fact i would have probably come certainly along this area anyway so what i have done is i have put one rod on a, on a spot that he suggested to me so that's just had a single milky malt on it he has well his spod rod was still here when i got here so i'm guessing he's been baiting so i've just put a single on it for now that'll do i'll top that area up should i need to but for the time being i'm not going to you know start piling loads of baiting the lake hasn't been fishing very well at all um the guy i've been walking around and the guys are saying it's been a bit grim but 
you know when, when I hear that I always think there's a point that that changes and if I can land on that point you know that's the only positivity that, positivity that you can take out of it so that's what I've done middle rod is getting a zig uh, I'm doing uh, one of these new zig insects from PB if you haven't seen these check them out they are mega so middle rods getting a zig probably a little bit above halfway for, for a starting point um, and the left hand rod will definitely be on S7 I'm going to get the marker out though, I don't, like I say, I don't know the lake, so I'm going to get the marker out, see if I can find a nice hard spot and just put a small amount of bait on it and then at least I've got something to work with with that rod. I'm not like, I don't want to be just throwing singles all over the place. Um, I want to watch the water and see if I can find them and if I find them, uh, I'll adjust what I'm doing. So. I'll get the other rods done uh, and I'll get it's, it is it's 10 degrees today which is pretty cold but this lake's a lot deeper than that one so I'm not too concerned about that it's it's been raining all morning which isn't good it's a cold rain but uh, like I say it's a deep lake we're still in with a chance so I'll get the other rods sorted out and I'll uh, let you know how I get on always nice to get off the mark on a new water and I've done that on my first night so real happy with this fish not one of the big fish out of this lake but 22 pound six it's a nice start it's midnight now and this was on the middle rod I changed it off the zig put it onto a bottom bait seen fish showing about 100 yards so I wanged a single across there and put about 30 baits out with a throwing stick of S7, my normal bait, and yeah, we've uh, we've had one of them. I'm guessing this is one of the stockfish. Not sure to be honest. Like I say, I don't know a lot a lot about the lake, but I'm off the mark. So I'll get it back, get the rod redone, and see if we can get another one. So I'm going to do this section from the bivvy because I know you probably can't hear it but there is a it's not a big wind but it's a cold wind it's blowing down the lake and I've got two hoodies on two t-shirts on yeah it's not I'm not full of confidence <laughs> I had that bite last night and I'm glad I did because I aren't feeling it anyway and I can't move it's dead busy anyway so I'm going to do a, a bit of a rig section uh, not something I tend to do too much on these vlogs, but uh, I do get asked the odd question through social media about t rigs, what rigs I use and how I like to fish. And also, you know, say like I've been filming in France or filming somewhere in the UK, I do get messages from people who are going to that lake saying, you know, you know, what presentation did you use? So I'll try and cover, I'm not going to tie anything up, I'm just going to give you an overview in terms of my presentation and, and kind of what I'm thinking. So the first thing I like to consider, am I fishing long or am I fishing close in? Because that, that makes a big difference as to how I'm thinking because for close in work I like to use inline leads. For distance fishing I'll use either a helicopter system or a lead clip system. The second thing I'm going to want to consider is what is the lake made up of? And, I'm, and when I'm saying what is the lake made up of, have you got snags? Have you got mussels? Have you got snails? Have you got... Um, weed have you got obstacles that are going to cause you problems that is a big consideration is the water cloudy or is the water clear another consideration what is the lake bed made up of another thing to consider um, 
it's been said by many people and far better anglers than I am many times in the past you know fish can see rigs and it's been proven by videos so you don't need me to tell you that your, your rig conceal, concealment is very important so for my close in stuff I use an inline lead um, I just I like the simplicity of them and I, I don't feel the need to use a lead clip when I can get away with something nice and slim and sleek like that um, this is the this is a hit and run lead clip system from PB it's quite a new thing I'll, I'll try my best to explain how it works basically what happens is you, you use these with a leader and this is a hit um, this is a silk rail lead what I'm using at the moment so what happens is you splice your leader and it comes over the back of there's a sleeve that sits inside this inline lead so you, you pop it over and it comes out through your swivel which is what your rig's going to be attached to or quick release slip, whichever one you choose to use and then it goes back up and through so it's a pulley system so when you get a bite what happens is when the fish picks you up what happens on this side is doubled on this side because it's a pulley so bite indication with these is absolutely mega and I just like I say I just like them they're just very simplistic they sit flat on the bottom and the mega now you can fish these in two different ways and I like to fish them as a running system so what I use is the swivel that I use into the into the like the holder that holds the swivel in I fish a slightly smaller one than what it's designed for so it, there's no resistance fish picks you up and there's absolutely nothing there you can fish them bowl if you want a fishing bowl it's up to you so that, that just means fishing the, the, the same size swivel that's for the sleeve if that makes sense um, the other thing about these and this is across the hit and run ranges if you say like I was to cast this and have a crack off or I was to cut my line on a fight or you know something happened to my main line which involved it being cut what happens is because the fish has pulled the swivel clean of it what happens is the whole leader comes through and everything drops off so if you have a cut off on this system all it can carry is the rig all this is gone so mega safe system and like I say for my close range stuff absolutely love it moving on to longer range longer range fishing I'm not going to use a really heavy inline lead I'll switch over to a lead clip um, well I'm saying that that is dependent upon what the lake bed's made up of and I'll try and explain what I'm talking about there if you're like when you're leading around if you're getting a really good thump with the lead I'll fish a lead clip uh, very similar to that so I've got a boom section I'm actually that this rig's actually a Ronnie but the, the point I'm trying to make is if the lead's landing with a really good thump you know it's going to sit flat on the lake bed if you've got fish showing in like a, a silty area or a mushy area imagine if this if this lead penetrated the mush by two inches well my rig's going to be sat up and then bend drowned like that presentation is going to be absolutely terrible so if I want to fish an area and I'm fishing at range but I do, I'm not getting a really good thump with the lead that tells me that a helicopter system is probably the best presentation and what I do I haven't got one tied up but what I'll do with my helicopter system in between the lead and where my rig is going to sit I'm going to have maybe a foot and a half of mono and then to a swivel and then onto my rig so it's still a safe system but that lead can plug and the rig can sit on the top of the mush and I'm still presenting a bit so I mentioned the silk rail leader um, this is a, a lead free braided leader and this this is going to protect I use about a meter of it this is going to protect the last bit of line that if I'm fishing at range this bit's going to be on the deck regardless of how tight I'm fishing anyway so if I've got like ledges mussels gravel and anything that's going to potentially damage my main line I would use this leader pr to protect it um, I've learned the hard way on this one by the way guys but in crystal clear water if I know I haven't got any obstacles like that which is exactly what I'm doing here today because I'm pretty confident I'm fishing on nice clean areas I'm going fluorocarbon the water's crystal clear so I want to absolutely 100% know that the fish aren't seeing my leader so I'm just using the blue ant fluorocarbon leader in 28 pound I've got that bit of strength just in case but they can't see it and, that, and that's one of the things I'm thinking about while I'm you know fishing a lake like this so in a nutshell when you're looking at your leader or your lead system just consider what the lake bed is made up of consider the potential for snapping your main line 
whatever that may be and just try and protect yourself as best you can say for example if you're fishing somewhere that does have a lot of obstacles don't be fishing a 0.28 line if you're not casting long you know go for a much heavier gauge main line and that just gives you that bit of security I am always thinking like my main I get so OCD about my main line it's it's frightening and I even do my own head in about it I'm so worried about it um, purely because I've lost big fish on far longer than what I was going to and I probably bored you but anyway um, I haven't touched on rigs yet so we'll we'll maybe do that another time so for the moment I'm gonna get my rods redone get fresh baits on and get ready for the night I, I'm not confident but you know I've been not confident before and had one so it's uh, it's worth making sure everything's right and uh, everything's on the spot and uh, fresh baits etc so I'm gonna do that now and uh, get some tea on I didn't get another bite from Willows, just that one fish but happy with that because I've not fished that late before and I've come down to stables and last night was a bit of a, well there was fish boshing everywhere but two liners and that was it. So, 21 pound two, one of the broken linears out of this lake, I don't think I've had this one before, well, I'm pretty sure I haven't actually, uh, what a stunning fish. So yeah what I thought was going to be a blank I'm just about to pack up and uh, a packing up fish which is always a bonus isn't it so there you go so this was on a milky malt over s7 one of my standard uh, baiting approaches and on the new pb power curves just on a little ronnie rig happy days i'm not blanked well that concludes this edition of my vlog i hope you enjoyed it uh, yeah autumn fishing i love it um, i've got another trip booked it well in the next couple of weeks I've got another trip booked so uh, I shall take the camera with me and let you know how I get on in the meantime I'm going to pack all this lot away so enjoy your fishing and I'll catch up with you all soon